different people. And not saying that race matters either. But it doesn't change the fact that he destroyed these people. And their family members. But they don't even like telling their story. They're not crying. There's no sincere like in the room with The two grown men tell similar Am I the only one that feels this way? I just wanted to go live because I'm like I'm feeling really bad that I like I don't believe these people and I've been a victim of of child molestation and and and, and being violated as a kid and I I I can't sexual relationship with each of them it's kind of like when you're first dating somebody right? you do a lot of it i just I feel like michael's alleged victims way robson and james safechuck and the film's director dan reed for a conversation i don't know i don't believe these people you guys and i feel like there's nothing here that makes me like believe like when you watch the r kelly shit it's like wow like you're getting hit after hit like you're tapped in like you you know intuition is everything y'all right i was sexually abused as a kid too and i just don't feel a connection with these people that are like talking about this like in my case it's like uh, it happened to me when i was in foster care so it was like i had no one to protect me a lot of these people are like your parents like let you sleep with a grown man like in a bed like i don't know this is this just don't you guys, am I wrong for feeling this way? It was also sexual seduction. So after I saw leaving, and then I'm kind of mad at Oprah. Like Oprah, do you believe these people? I called up Dan Reed. I didn't know Dan Reed, and told him, Dan, I said you were able to illustrate. Guys, I don't believe them. Man, I feel so bad. Like I feel like, as a human that's been in these people's shoes, or in their accusations, I should say because I don't believe them like I've been that kid and you just like it's when it's it's like relatable like you know like watching this I don't feel like I can relate to these people like this is true and that's what's kind of bothering me it's like and then it's also like why would someone go out their way to ruin someone's legacy like this or to make such an accusation I know it's been done before, but it's like, I don't know, y'all. I'm so conflicted with this. What do you guys think? Am I the only one who doesn't, like, feel like this is, like... Because, like, even when they're telling their story, it's just kind of like, mm, I don't know. It doesn't give off like you were really violated or, like, this really happened to you. What you think? Granted, Michael definitely used to be very over friendly with kids, but I also feel like Michael lacked a big part of his childhood. So being the way he was with kid with kids was his way of like having that lost childhood, you know, like getting a chance to get that back. I just can't see that man being as as who he was and how much of a difference he made in the world and four kids and all that stuff. Him taking the time out to violate a child. What y'all think? I had no understanding that what Michael did to me sexually was abuse. Um, I had no concept of it being that. You know, from from night one uh, of the abuse of the sexual stuff that Michael did to me. Like, Michael was scared to have sex with fucking the top women he dated. And that God brought us together. And, you know, and I was this little boy from the other side of the world. If you guys are just tuning in and watching, I'm talking about the Neverland documentary. And I'm just trying to, like, connect and believe these people. 
and I feel kind of weird and bad. I feel bad that I don't believe in them, and I just want to know, like, I'm the only one that's in this kind of predicament, because I really feel bad. I've been that kid before. I know what that feels like. It's heartbreaking. It's it's a complete violation. It's a sense of innocence that you will never be able to get back in life. You know, it definitely alters who you are as a person, big time. I just don't. I don't feel like I've heard stories and other people's stories about being molested as a child. And it just, you know, it hits home. It's relatable. And as I'm watching this, I'm just cringing because I just don't feel that with this. Like, I don't feel like these people are telling them, you know, but I can't say I don't believe you. That's like, you know, you can't take someone's experience and say it didn't happen. That's why I think as a human being, I feel really bad and i just want to have this conversation because i don't know if i'm the only one that feels this way i just i don't know and actually there's there's no one we can even compare him to today because stars aren't stars like that anymore they don't shine that brightly so it's clear to see what do you guys think the grooming process it was such a striking moment when you said in the film james that um you had a marriage ceremony with Michael Jackson, with rings and handwritten vows. And once you said vows, you feel completely complicit, did you not? Yeah, that, <clears throat> that moment was part of him you guys, telling we'll be together forever. Have you guys because watched this? The, I think it's something sort of solidify our, our love. that we should um, sit down and, and, and watch, know, especially uh, like you if your kid is old enough to definitely sit down and watch with them I'll probably watch this with King maybe one next year or something like that um, just cause it's just kind of like I don't know I just don't feel like to have this conversation this would be the right documentary with your child it just doesn't hit home as being like so sincere all the way around they're not gonna let themselves be punished I think so many parents don't understand that it doesn't feel like hurt and once you have committed, once you have, in your case, uh, actually said vows and you have rings to prove that, as you say, that you all are together, right. uh, you're all in. Yeah, I mean, even before that, I was all in. I mean, the, the, the intensity of the love that you have for him. He, he also wedges, uh, you know, space between you and your parents, you and the rest of the world. You know, he works very hard at that. So it's you and him against the world and that's I don't know y'all the world's intense love for him. and then it's, it's like the feds was on Michael for every single thing like if this was like I don't I just feel like this would have came out sooner with more evidence like the stuff with R. Kelly you know like it's been coming out I know they've been saying this about Michael but I also feel like you know R. Kelly, there's evidence. Like, besides these people's stories, like, there's not real. I don't know, you guys. I just don't believe these people, and I feel really bad, just because. Like, what if this is true? You know, but I don't. I don't feel that connection. Like, I don't feel like. So when Wade came out and we saw him on the Today Show, was that the first time you you consciously recognized there were others? Because obviously you recognized there were others because you testified in a trial. Recognized there were others. Um, I mean, I just who else seen the um little kid? Um, and you don't think about there being others. Your brain doesn't go there. You're just thinking about. You. Am I the only? Who believes them? Um, who believes like? The people in this documentary. Am I the only one that doesn't? You know, there wasn't an immediate sense of. Was that the first time you knew there was a Wade? I knew of Wade. I had met Wade twice when we were kids. I met on the set of the Jam video, and then Michael had a weekend in Neverland with us and a few other kids. So I I knew of Wade, and and you know I felt you know he was he was nice, so I got along with him as a as a little kid. But that that's it. Okay. So when you saw Wade on the Today Show, 
that triggered you to feel worse. I know it's not fair to say I don't believe them. What I'm saying is that me personally watching them, I don't get that sense that this is true. And as a human being, I feel bad because for me to feel that way and being a child that once was in their shoes of their accusations, I should say, you know, like most of the time when I hear stories or someone telling their story on what has happened to them as a child, I feel an instant connection. Like it's just hit, it hit home. And that's the void that I'm like, I don't feel that with these people. I'm not saying I necessarily don't believe them. I'm saying my intuition watching this and their reactions and how they're explaining this is just not like, you know, I'm not downplaying these people and saying that it's not true. I'm saying I don't feel that connection. Like I once was that child growing up. So when I hear stories now, even now from other adults on their experiences, you know, I usually am able to kind of feel like, okay, I could relate to this, you know, like, I just feel like even with them telling their stories, it just doesn't, in their eyes, you don't see it, you know, like, you just have this feeling, like, I don't know, like I said, I'm not trying to, um, downplay anyone's experience especially something with this kind of topic it's serious it's a real deal and like i said i was once that child i've experienced that before um so i know what that feels like you know i know firsthand i just feel like watching it being that child once before and listen to these people's stories i don't have a connection which i normally do when I listen to people who, you know, like even with R. Kelly's situation, like, you know, it wasn't that intense for me, my experience or whatever in that sense. But, you know, you feel it. You just like there's this intensity of like, you know, intuition never lies to you. And I'm just saying my intuition just doesn't connect with these people and their stories. And that's what's kind of messing me up because... I mean, it's Michael Jackson, and he's done so much for great, like, so many great things for kids. Like, you know, kids all over the world, you know. And granted, he, like I said, he has been known for being over-friendly with kids and being extremely generous and things of that nature, which can make, you know, people assume or feel funny. You know, that's probably why the rumors started or why this whole situation came about. But at the end of the day, you have to realize this man didn't have a childhood. So, you know, he took in kids and did for kids and all this great stuff for people because of that. He was able to do that. And it kind of like helped him fill the void of not having a childhood. I mean, if you know anything about Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson was scared to have sex with, you know, Brooke Shields and all these amazing women that he once dated. I just don't understand how he would be opened and that malicious to kind of sexually have any type of interaction with a child. I just don't see him being that kind of person. Not saying that there's a type. I'm just saying, like, you know, he was just different. And I think in a different that was good, not in this kind of way. Yeah, like all all the everyone's experiences, female experiences with Michael's like he was so timid with sex and things of that nature. He wasn't even self confident if you really think about it. You know, he did a lot of work to himself because of you know, of him feeling the way he felt. You know, I don't see like a pedophile usually is someone who likes to be controlled like you know, control and have some type of malicious intent and, you know, we, we know them to be. There's just certain characteristics in an individual that would violate a child. And I don't see that being that, you know. He dated Elvis Presley. Well, he married her, didn't he? He married, yeah. And even that, when you saw the story on that, she even explained, like, they hardly ever had, like, he didn't want to have sex. He's not that kind of guy. 
he still had a very young childish mentality. So how do you go from that to trying to have sex with the child? I just don't feel like it matches. And then the stories itself, like I don't feel like there's much of a connection. Like, and that's, you know, like I, I feel bad because, you know, when someone's telling you their story, you know, like you can't downplay that, you know, like you have to have faith in people. But my intuition just doesn't have that faith in these stories. Just, you know, it's kind of disappointing. And then Oprah's in it. So it makes you feel like you have to believe it. It's like Mother Oprah's on this documentary as well. Then I also feel like a lot of people were out to get Michael from Jump. <laughs> There's just so many conspiracy theories that go on with people of color. You know, the greatest ones get like the worst fucking shit served to them. And I think Michael's definitely one of those people. Michael is extremely powerful. As it still is, if you really think about it. I know, I feel like like MJ should be resting in peace. And like things like this shouldn't be happening. But at the same time, if this is true, you know, these survivors definitely have the right to tell their story. But again, the only reason why I'm discussing this on my live is because I have once been a child that was molested. And I usually, you know, connect when I hear another, you know, victim story. I just not having that victim on victim like connection. Is that victim the right word? Yeah, like I was, yeah, a victim of of, of a trial predator, like whatever. Um, I usually have that connection.